So, I got something that I want to complain about for a minute. I don't know, white man, you tell me. You just upset again that every local IPA across the country tastes exactly the same? So, yeah, but that's not what I want to talk about. What's really been getting my goat recently has been a lot of coverage over horse races. But I'm not talking about the event that your formal date and his bros go to every year to bet their parents' money and yell racial slurs without consequences. I'm talking about the political horse race. And if you've never heard of that term, honestly, good for you. It probably means you don't spend every waking hour of your life on Twitter looking for the next New York Times poll drop. And the reason I want to talk about it is it's giving a lot of people a really false sense of security. And before you click away, I'm not the smug guy in the back of your poli-sci class with the Turning Point USA sticker on his laptop will actually you over how there's some kind of silent majority and Trump is gonna sweep in and beat Joe just like he did Hillary. But I am the one who will drift off mid-conversation at a party because I'm helplessly refreshing my 538 widget because D plus 10 polling data is my only source of serotonin anymore. So you win some, you lose some. But I really want to just take a minute and unpack exactly what poll data and poll averages are telling us. Because I've had a lot of conversations with friends and family who just can't believe that Trump has a chance of winning. And I can't blame them. Like every new story comes out just makes it seem like, you know, the president is self-destructing and Joe Biden is surging the polls. He's out raising Donald Trump. He's outspending him in swing states. Absolutely. But just because Biden is considered to have a high chance of winning the electoral college does not make it a sure thing. So I, when I originally had the idea to do this, I was gonna lay out how the probabilities worked with the die because President Trump had about a one in six chance of winning the presidency according to most polling averages. And I wanted to get really fancy with it and like use him and Joe Biden's faces and kind of impose them on die. I'll kiss the guys and the beautiful women and um, But somehow the president everybody. was doing worse than he was when I originally had the idea. Um, so we're gonna have to improvise, but I think I know I can lay this out. Okay, so let's get a few definitions straight. The horse race in politics is the tracking of ongoing head-to-head -head polling. And if you've turned on any kind of cable news, you've absolutely seen it before. Something like this. He led white voters by nine points. Now, Biden has wide margins with those first two games. Or this. We see the Midwest become this focal point battle. Or this. If he won them all, he would still be short. So the president needs to come back. Or my favorite. Former Vice President Joe Biden with a lead over President Trump. 48. And while this kind of coverage makes for pretty decent TV, it actually skews our understanding of where the race really is. Because when you watch one of these clips at any given moment, you're watching pundits talk about a snapshot of a sample of a group of people at just one particular moment. It just doesn't really give us a better idea of where the race is really going. So this is where the idea of polling averages come in. Groups like 538 or the Cook Political Report or Real Clear Politics take all of the existing polls for any given race, they combine them and then they average them out and track how they've changed over time. That's how each of them will create a forecast. Each of these forecasts are represented by how likely they think a certain outcome will occur for an election. For example, 538, which is probably the organization that you have most likely heard of, or at least have seen their information the most, will take their averages and put it into a model which weighs all sorts of things like demographics for different states, different turnout variables, quality of the polling in that area, and all, and all sorts of other nerdy stuff. Then they take all that information, plug it into the model, and then run it 10,000 times. Then they post it on their website and those are the results you see. So 538 doesn't run the model 10,000 times just because they can, but because they are following the law of large numbers. It's a simple stat rule that the larger the sample that you have, the more predictive it is of the true population. So the logic follows, the more times they run the model, the closer the model will probably be to the outcome of the election. So if you went on 538's website, since the day I recorded this, you would see that they give Joe Biden an 87% chance of winning the election. So simply put, if we had the election 10 times, Joe Biden would win nine out of those 10 times. Average out more, if you ran the election 100 times, Joe Biden would win 90 of those times, and so on. Now, where might we have heard that one before? Now, the team at 538 and Cook Political Report and what have you will be the first ones to tell you that their models are not 100% predictive. They're not gonna call the race. That's not their purpose. However, this is where we start to get in trouble because a casual observer of politics or a low propensity voter would look at that 87% or that 91% Hillary duh, and decide, oh, Biden's gonna win that by a landslide. There's no way that Trump can win. The whole reason I broke out my dumb camera and my microphone and put my hat on, and this is where the goat is got. This is where the marbles are lost. This is Okay, instead of shouting, let me just show you.
these cards represents the outcome of election night. Card 38 gives Joe Biden an 87% chance of winning the White House. Now, I don't really want to deal with that math, so we're just going to say he has a 90% chance. I'm just going to round up just a little bit. For that reason, you're going to see Joe Biden have nine cards on the table and Donald Trump with one. Now, here's what's a little bit different, though. Because I'm not a computer model or I have a whole lot of time, I'm not going to treat this like any kind of forecast model and you know, put these together, shuffle them up, and then draw the winner 10,000 times. What we're going to do is treat this like election night. So I'm going to put them all together here, shuffle it up, and I'm going to draw it. And the winner is the winner. Now, you know, even if you're sitting in a casino, you would like your odds, right? Nine and one, no problem. All right, got to shuffle up, and the next leader of the free world will be... Wait, uh, wait, okay. Well, uh, we'll just, uh, we'll just try again. Maybe, uh, maybe the Russians interfered with that one. I don't know, we'll just try it. Uh, try. Okay, ready? And next leader of the free world. Of course, I don't want to be disingenuous. Just like a forecast, if you drew this 10,000 times or a million times, you'd see that Joe Biden wins a significant amount more times. But, uh, I'm, uh, I'm gonna let you in the trade secret. There's only one election, and you gotta take what you get. Unless you're a Supreme Court justice in the year 2000. But the election isn't just as simple as drawing cards. Ballots that have been cast already and the ballots that'll come in on election day are all affected by all sorts of different things that I don't have time to talk about. And just like every cycle, this election year comes down to a select amount of key states with all different kinds of demographics and odds for Biden or Trump to carry. But I wanted to keep this one short. Besides, you think I'm just gonna get one video out of this? Come on. So yes, Biden has about a 90% chance of winning and he should win. But everything from the pandemic to weather to even a couple bad voting machines in some key counties in certain states can have huge ramifications on how the election goes. There's a metaphor for this election that I heard pretty recently. If you got into your car and looked at your seat and there was a note that said there's a 10% chance that the, this thing's gonna explode when you start the ignition, would you start your car? No, you would go get some help or you would do something about it. You wouldn't just idly start the car. And, and that's the thing, are the odds higher that the right thing should happen will happen? Sure, but if you have agency here, are you really even just gonna play with those odds idly? So that's what these last two weeks are really about, is raising those odds. Whether that's organizing more people to vote, whether it's donating to an important campaign on the home stretch, or volunteering for them, because yes, closed races still need volunteers up till the very last day. Whether it's making sure that you got your ballot mailed in, whether you're voting early, or making plans to go stand in line on election day, or whether it's helping people get to the polls, whether that's now or on election day. There are all sorts of ways to get involved in the home stretch and get Trump out of office. Uh, yeah, so I'm thoroughly terrified and uh, I'll see you in a month and democracy doesn't die. All right, bye.